Hello, the mysterious person on the screen. So, Buffy the Vampire Slayer season four. Yeah, so this is a this is a region one set. Actually, I got this in a uh, charity shop in South Wales of all places. <laughs> um, and this is a, this is a it's a really cool set. It's not the only region one set I have. So back there, it's this nice digi pack that folds out, and we got Buffy there and a quote, and the gang, the gentleman. And we got discs there, and then the other side, same again. We have Adam and some monsters, and then we've got Buffy again, more discs, and just some booklets, which I've taken a couple of them out, but uh, yeah, we've got some booklets there. So this is a really cool set. Um, obviously, it gave me a slightly different experience to how I would if I was watching the Region 2 set. The Region 2 set is obviously in widescreen. This is in 4x3, which is how it should be. Um, and also, obviously, the Region 2 set has the PAL speed up, and this is the place at the correct speed. So, after having PAL speed up for the first three seasons, going to this one where they signed how they should do felt a bit jarring because they signed deeper to me. Even though they weren't, even though that's how they should sign, they signed it deeper to me, which I don't know. Uh, I had to get used to it, but it, you know, it, it didn't really affect the experience at all. Um, but yeah, so this is season four. Season four, um, bit of a step down for me. I find season four to be very messy, quite inconsistent. Individual episodes were great, but the arc was just not very good, in my opinion. Um, and I guess I'll talk about that now, just while I'm here. The initiative. Yeah, I mean, it's a cool concept, but they didn't do anything. By episode 14, the only like change that had happened was Professor, Wal Professor Walsh had died, which wasn't supposed to happen. It was sort of a consequence of the act. Uh, something happened. No one knows what it is or what happened, but something did, which meant that the actor left the show. And she had to be written out in a, in a way that they weren't planning on to. They had to introduce a new big bad, but the initiative still weren't doing anything. They were just a bit, oh, watch out for that military organisation. They might be a bit suspicious. Compare this to season three. By this time, we were already seeing Faith's downfall and seeing how ruthless she was and seeing her join the mayor and seeing her go to the dark side, as it were. And we, we you know, we saw uh, but uh, Buffy trying to, to cope with that. Season four, nothing. Compare it to season two. By this point, we were seeing Angel turn into Angelus and that whole dynamic changing and him wreaking havoc and then him joining Spike and Juicilla and Spike sort of going down a you know, to the peg in power, but yeah, again, the initiative just haven't done anything, and that's really the main problem with them. The uh, main problem with the season, really, the the arc just wasn't very good. They, they they didn't do anything. Adam didn't do anything really. He just sort of he he got introduced, and then for the next eight episodes, he just stood around going, "What am I? Am I human?" And he just started asking all these existential questions, and then Buffy beat him at the end, and then yeah. But the thing is, individual episodes were really good. Um, you know, I'll, I'll pick some out now. I'll just put this to the side and get the little booklet here. So, we, you know, we have the, the Freshman, which is a good start. We have Living Conditions, which is a hilarious episode, one of my favourites from the season. Really love that one. Um, the Harsh Light of Day, which is great, and we got Spike in there. So, you know, Spike's always good. And one of the best things about the season is introducing Spike as a, a series regular, which he still is. And, uh, I, you know, I, he's great. I, I adore Spike as a character. He's so good. And he gets some standout moments during the season, which I'll talk about later. Uh, episode 4, Fear Itself, is really great as well. It's, you know, really nice, light-hearted Halloween episode. It's like a haunted house. And then at the end, we've got the little, tiny, teeny, tiny monster. And, and they all start laughing. And that's really funny. Uh, Be a Bad, universally voted the worst Buffy episode. I thought it was okay. To me, I didn't think it was that bad. I thought Go Fish was worse. I thought Be a Bad was just a fun, goofy episode, and you know, we, we, the the resolution to the Parker storyline of uh, you know Parker sleeping with Buffy, then just leaving. I yeah, maybe he should have had his proper comeuppance rather than being hit over the head with a with a club. But you know, I wanted to hit him over the head with a club after what he did, so it's fine. Plus, we get. Buffy tired, which is great. Episode 6, Wild at Heart, Oz. Oh man, really upsetting this one. We've got uh, Oz leaving Sunnydale after you know the werewolf becomes too feral. 
and Willow finds him cheating and it's so it's the scene at the end is insanely well acted it always hurts to see Willow cry as it is but it's just it's insanely well done and uh, I'm just gonna nick a quote from Passion of the Nerd that end scene isn't for us it's for Oz and Willow so yeah that's a great episode episode 7 the initiative which introduces the initiative I thought this was a really great one as well I mean I, you know, as I said, I have my problems with the initiative, but I think this was a really good episode to introduce them. I mean, we've got Spike getting the chip in his head, finding out that he can't bite anyone. Um, and he tests that on Willow. He goes to try and kill Willow. Doesn't quite work. And we've got this lovely little scene where they're just kind of talking. And it's really well done. And, um, you know, please, I'd bite you in a heartbeat. I'm saying little Spike's had a trip to the vet and now he doesn't chase the other puppies anymore. <laughs> I, I, it, it, Spike becomes this sort of anti-hero that just reluctantly helps because he doesn't really have a choice. Like, you know that in his mind, if that chip wasn't there, he'd kill every single one of them. But because that chip's there, he can't kill anyone. He's literally just going along with it, just nothing else to do. Plus, they're feeding him blood. So, you know, that's all, that's all great. And, uh, yeah, the initiative's a good one. Uh, episode 8, we've got Pans. This is the one that crosses over with Angel. I'll talk about Angel a bit later in the video because this, a lot of these episodes cross over with episodes of Angel, so I'll talk about that later. Uh, but Pans is a good one. We've got um, a bear. You made a bear. <laughs> reverse it, reverse it. <laughs> that's that's great. Um, other than that, eh, it's okay. It's, it's, uh, it's not really anything to write home about. Episode 9, Something Blue, so we've got Willow still getting over the uh, the pain of losing Oz, and she accidentally, uh, you know, she casts a spell, and she causes mayhem, so we've got Buffy and Spike falling in love, foreshadowing, um, we've got uh, Giles going blind, um, I can hear you smacking your lips, <laughs> um, oh, it's so good, really like that one, then we get the absolute masterpiece that is Hush, uh, episode 10 of the season, which is, you know, Hush gets a lot of uh, praise, and it really is rightly so. Hush is an absolute masterpiece of TV. Obviously, it's the silent episode, so for most of the runtime, there's no dialogue at all. It's completely just the actors selling it on their facial expressions, their movements, and I imagine this must have been so hard, but it's so good. Written and directed by Joss Whedon. Such a good episode. One of the one of the seminal episodes of Buffy. Definitely one of my favourites. Um, can't even shake, can't even cry. Gentlemen are coming by. That's it's so, it's so creepy. And the gentlemen are smacked all over this packaging. And they're so good. They're su such good villains. The way they glide along with the grins. And it's like, oh, it's, it's really haunting, actually. Um, and it's just taking heart. It's really horrific. But it's also... It's such a great horror short film, but it's also offset by amazing moments with the gang, like uh, the Buffy will patrol tonight. Uh, Giles is drawing a Buffy and her disgust at it. And we've also got um, Buffy's suggestion on how to beat them, and she goes like that, and they all just look at her and, and just... Oh, it's, that's so good. I love Hush so much. It's incredible. And the wonderful symmetry at the end with Buffy and Riley... They just find out each other's secrets, and they need to talk about it, but they can't say a word to one another, even though they've got their voices back. That is such a clever way to end an episode. Just, ah, uh, Hush is amazing. Episode 11, Doomed. Um, yeah, it's, I can't really, if I'm being honest, I can't really remember much about this one. Um, they do go back to Sunnydale School, I think. I think this is the one that they, they, they go back to the blown-up Sunnydale, which is nice. Um, but yeah, nothing nothing too special, but uh, it's written by three people. It's written by Marty Knox and David Fury and Jane Espenson. And I like all of those writers, but I guess maybe this is one that uh, just sort of amidst the arc and amidst just coming directly after Hush and coming before something like a new man it's like it just gets lost in the crowd but yeah so then we get episode 12 um, a new man which is the return of Ethan Rain as uh, Giles <laughs> Giles turns into a Viral demon and we've got it's so so funny him chasing Walsh down the street <laughs> uh, so Spike driving him along it's great it's so cool I love that one. Episode 13, The Iron Team, um, and Goodbye Iowa, 13 and 14 are a two-parter. Um, yeah, this, this, 
I think this is the one where Buffy tries to join the initiative and we've got that wonderful shot where it's this crowd of army dudes and she just puts her hand up and it's just like she's so small amongst it. Um, but obviously then that all goes to shite and they try and kill her and then Walsh dies. And then things happen that you could tell wasn't their intention. You can tell they had greater plans for it. But Walsh gets replaced as the big bad of the season by Adam who's this cool looking cyborg, half demon, half human, half robot looking guy, he's cool. Um, which extends it to Goodbye Iowa, um, and the gang sort of have to lay low. Uh, simply be, simply because the initiative know where they are, so they have to they go h hide out in Xander's basement. We've got Buffy's sushi pyjamas, which are amazing. Um, and that's really, it's a testament, I think in any other show, an arc like this, I probably would have given up because it's just not great. But the fact that I love these characters, I stuck with it because I love these characters. And scenes like that show me why. Scenes where they all have to camp out at Xander's and there's not really much room. And Giles sleeping in the beanbag and um, Anya and Willow and Buffy's banter as they're in the bed. It's it's just, it's brilliant. This is why I, 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 I just I just adore these characters and it's why I, why I stuck with the season. Uh, after all, and I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm making the season sound worse than it actually is. It's not bad by any means. It's still Buffy, so it's still great TV. But I'm just saying, the, compare this to seasons one, two, and three. It is a step down, but uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, we've got all that going on. Then we get episode 15, this year's girl, which is the return of Faith, and that leads over to episode 16, which is Who Are You? So it's a two-parter again. So we get two two parters after each other. Um. And they're both, are they both written and directed by Joss? Oh no, okay, so this year's Girl's written by Douglas Petrie and directed by Michael Gershman. Who Are You is written by, written and directed by Joss Whedon. And Who Are You and This Year's Girl, great. So it's obviously, I think everyone knows it's by Buffy and Faith. Um, switching Bodies, I forgot there. Uh, switching body, Bodies, but uh, Faith comes back looking for revenge. She comes out of the coma that we last saw her in in season three, because last saw her, she got thrown in a in a um in a dump truck and was in a coma and we see the return of the mayor and obviously the mayor's dead he died at the end of season three but we see that he's left video messages for faith and it's kind of sweet in a way that it's kind of like he he is her father figure even though she's nuts and he's nuts but he left her a message in case he kind of knew that he'd die and that's kind of beautiful in a way it's kind of it's really well done um, but yeah, now they um, they switch bodies. Uh, Who are you? Has an amazing scene where Faith is testing out Buffy's body, and it's kind of creepy but kind of funny. So you know she's in the mirror, and she's going, "I'm Buffy. This is wrong. This is wrong. It's it's great. It's it's really good." Um, and I have to say, Sarah Michelle Gellar and Eliza Dushku are really good at getting each other's mannerisms, particularly Sarah Michelle Gellar as uh, as Faith. Oh, wait, no, yeah, so I'm sure that as Faith in Buffy's body. She got the mannerisms really well done. Obviously, she kind of rapes Riley, um, which, that's, I, mm, that's kind of, that's, that's an element that just, to me, is very, very, I'm, I, mm, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm gonna just move on, because, yeah, but yeah, no, that's great, and that will lead into an amazing episode of Angel. So, I'll, you know, talk about that. Um, then we get episode 17, Superstar, which is really, really good. Um, you know, it's uh, reality has been altered because suddenly it seems like Jonathan is the is the saviour of, uh, of everyone. He's the coolest person in town, the most popular person in town. He's got movies, he's got books, he's got TV shows, he's got cereal. Everyone idolises him. Xander wants... Is it Xander that wants to get the um, the... The Jonathan calendar is really well done, and um, yes, yeah, it's 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 so good. And even in the opening credits, Jonathan's just in the opening credits as the savior of everyone. It's brilliant. It's really well done. It's a really funny, really funny episode. Episode eighteen, where the wild things are, aka the episode where Buffy and Riley have sex in a room for forty-five minutes. Not great. Episode 19, New Moon Rising. I better pick that up, actually. Uh, uh. No, it was, it was an okay episode. It's just... It's... It's... Uh, yeah. Um... 
Episode 19, New Moon Rising, which Willow and Tara sort of officially get together. And uh, I'll talk about Tara for a bit. I really like Tara. <laughs> Simple as. I really like her. And um, I think after after Oz, uh, this is just what Willow needed. And I, it, it was really one of the first LGBT major LGBT relationships on TV with Willow and Tara and they're so good together they really they fit really well they're, they're a good foil for one another they're very similar and um, it's it's nice because Willow's obviously grown a lot since season one and when we first meet Tara in this she's kind of she's kind of like what Willow was in season one and it's it's a nice symmetry there and I'm on season five now and she's grown so much as well and I, I, I really love them together they're so good um, Tara is is brilliant, um, and I think once when they blow out the candle at the end of this episode, everyone knows what's going to happen, and uh, yeah, it's great. It's great. They're really good, and I do, I do feel a bit sorry for Oz. I do love Oz, but uh, I do love Tara as well. So I love them both as a significant other for Willow. But uh, yeah, they're both great. But yeah, Tara, love Tara. <laughs> Um, but then we get uh, episode 20, the Yoko Factor, and episode 21, Primeval. So, uh, again, another two part. There's a lot of two parters this season, isn't there? I've only just realised this now, just, just looking at it. There is a lot of two parters. Episode 20, the Yoko Factor. So, um, yeah, so Adam comes to Spike and goes, Look, you're going to help me. Why should I? Because you got a chip in your head. All right, fair enough. You're gonna drive a wedge between Buffy and her friends because I've seen, I've like read all the statistics because I'm a robot. Buffy works better when she's got friends. Buffy functions better when she's got friends. So you're gonna help me drive them all apart. Um, which culminates, you know, Spike throughout the episode plants all these seeds, um, drives all the, drives the gang apart, which culminates in a massive argument. And it's kind of a really good scene but also kind of heartbreaking because you love these characters and you don't want to see them fight, but we've also got drunk Giles in the background, just absolutely hammered um, when Willow announces that Tara's her girlfriend. You just hear him off screen go, bloody hell, and just something smash, which is amazing. <laughs> um, and that's great. And then we get episode 21, Primeval, which is really the finale of the season. It's the finale of the arc. Um, when everyone reconciles and goes, look, I'm sorry, I love you all. And there's this wonderful scene where they're rappelling down into the initiative and they hug and they just, you know, Xander comes down and Buffy and Willow are just like, I love you. And he just goes, we're going to die, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just, oh, it's brilliant. It's it's proper cathartic to see them, to see them join together. Also, in um, skipping back to, to Wild at Heart, when Buffy leaves the room and says, love you, Will, that's a proper... Aww moment <laughs> so uh, yeah so we've got uh, so all that and then they join forces they make the mega buffy which is like um the spirit the heart and is it the mind of uh, of of buffy so giles willem zander represent all that join forces buffy's eyes go yellow and then she gets all these powers so adam shoots at her and she makes all the bullets like disappear almost and to yeah it's so good and it's so cool and he just she beats him and that's the end of this e oh wait we've got one more haven't we yeah, episode 22, Restless. Written and directed by Joss Whedon again, as all the best episodes of the season are. Restless is a masterpiece. It's so brave to end the season on just a coda. Really, the arc, everything's tied up in Primeval, but it ends with this really quiet, surreal, trippy dream sequence episode where all the gang are having dreams. And, you know, I could talk about this a lot, but it wouldn't, it really wouldn't, me sitting here recapping it wouldn't justify it. The only thing I could say is just go watch the episode yourself and it will speak for itself. But some of the visuals in this, um, Willow's dream with the play, um, and it's so, 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 you know, the cheese man, I wear the cheese, it does not wear me. So much clever foreshadowing as well with uh, Tara telling Buffy to be back before dawn. I cannot wait to talk about season five. <laughs> but, uh, you yeah, know, Tara tells Buffy to be back before dawn. Which, obviously, um, it's just so much foreshadowing. Xander's dream as well. Because um, Xander in this season has felt very, 
he's felt useless. Post high school life has not been kind to him. Um, they've all gone off to college, and he's just felt very. He's living in his mum's basement, and he's just felt like he's nothing. Um, which does which does give us a beautiful scene. I think it's in episode twenty or twenty one where he starts dating Anya properly this season. Which Anya's oh my god, Anya, you, he's just so funny. Um, <laughs> I'm imagining having sex with him again. <laughs> um, we, where they're just together and she, she just tells him that he is loved and it's really nice. Um, but the scene with them in the ice cream truck is great. The image of Spike and Giles on the swing together, both dressed in tweed. Um, Spike posing in this black and white scene where he's in this photo shoot and he's like do, do, doing his coat like that. Just going like that and stuff. It's, it's proper. It's Spike hamming it up, which is always fun. And yeah, Restless is a masterpiece. I could talk for ages about Restless, but it wouldn't do it justice. And there's so much to unpack with it. It's such a dense episode, full of details. And it's genius television. The way that the shots are used and the way that the cinematography is, the colour grading, so we've got massively high key lighting in some scenes. There's a lot to analyse there, is what I'm saying. And much more than I could just sit here talking about. But um, no, it's really good, really good, that one. Such a clever episode, very clever. And now, a word on Angel. So, of course, beginning with Buffy Season 4, Angel started on the uh, airing immediately after it, and uh, Angel sort of, it, it, you know, it, it follows up on certain characters' arcs, and it works as a nice companion piece to the show. And the reason I, I you know, from this, uh, from this season onwards, I started watching a Buffy episode, then the corresponding Angel episode and alternated it. Yes, it takes me bloody years to get through the seasons that way, but it means I can savour the show for longer. It means I can spend more time in this universe. It means I can see the complete uninterrupted character arcs of, uh, of characters, specifically Wesley and Cordelia. Um, but yeah, so I don't know if you noticed this as well. This, this, covers, this covers nice, but then we've got Cordelia from like that's how she appeared in season three or four i don't know yet because i haven't watched that far but uh yeah also interesting to note about this it's rated 18. i'm not really sure why um one of the discs or is it disc five is rated 18. not sure why um really it angel is like tortured in that it is much darker than its parent show but it's not that much it's not like i don't i would have rated this a 15 but whatever um so yes angel um i really enjoyed season one of angel overall it's not perfect there's some teething problems i think it, it's sort of for a lot of the season it is trying to figure out what it wants to be in relation to buffy i don't think it, it, it sticks the landing at some points um and again like buffy there's a weird thing that happens that seems unplanned and I'll, you know I, I may as well talk about it Doyle you know spoil, spoil, spoilers if you haven't seen Angel you should watch it it's a good show but spo Doyle dies in episode 9 and it seemed like he was the main character and he just dies halfway through the season um I what happened there is is that another case of 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 the actor wanting to lick because Glenn Quinn bless him he's dead now he he sadly passed away not long after Angel happened, but so I've I've read some reports that that just it wasn't working, so they killed him up. But it's still it's like it's it's weird. Definitely, nineteen ninety nine and two thousand were uh, the transitional years for for Buffy. Obviously, this and this starting and stuff. But yeah, we've got some great ones here. I won't go through every episode, but uh, yeah, I really uh, really some of my favourites are the one where Doyle dies. Hero, Hero is a really good one. Um, that it? Am I done? And in general, I really enjoyed jo Doyle as a character. I thought he was a lot of fun. And I do kind of miss him. But at the same time, his death led to getting Wesley back. And Wesley and Cordy work really well together. You know, I talked about this in my Season 3 Buffy video. Um, but just a reason to watch Angel is... Wesley in Buffy is a whiny... Um, well, not not whiny. He's more of a weaselly sort of pathetic individual. Uh, in in Angel, he sort of he becomes his own person, and there are episodes like the one where the kid gets possessed that uh, that delve deep into his insecurity. Like he feels like he's useless, um, and we, we, we it's really great to see him like grow and. You know, he wants to be taken seriously, but no one does. Um, I'm a rogue demon hunter. What's a rogue demon? 
Um, likewise, Cordelia. I mean, the theme... Everyone always says Buffy is about becoming an adult and growing up. Uh, Angel is about living as an adult and being an adult. The problems that come with it. In that respect, Cordelia in Buffy in seasons 1 to 3 being this spoilt rich kid from Hal and transitioning into this really mature decent human being that wants to help people it's really riveting to see and I really she's one of my favorite parts about this season in particular she's just so great and she plays off with Angel and Doyle and later Wesley very very well and uh, obviously later she gets visions um, Doyle passes that on to her when he dies and uh, Charisma Carpenter is really great in the, in it so uh, yeah I really enjoyed Cordelia in it um, episodes like is it um, the one that crosses over with the harsh light of day called In the Dark, Spike comes to LA. Um, oh, look at me. Ta da! To the Angel Mobile! <laughs> Just he's watching Angel save this, save this, uh, this victim. And uh, that's a really good one where Angel becomes immune to like the sun briefly and he just takes the time to just look at the day. That's really beautifully done. Um, I Will Remember You, where Buffy comes to. Um, to LA to talk with Angel uh, and it's it's like watching season two of Buffy it's beautiful it's oh god I can't even talk about it it's the uh, it's the scene at the end gets me every time because they get to live their perfect day as a couple but then the world has to be reset okay, Angel becomes human and the, 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 the minute before the world resets and Buffy and Angel don't have long and she says how am I supposed to go on with my life knowing what we had? I felt your heartbeat and they kiss and it's it's such a well done scene and I'm, I, you can hear David Boreanaz call her Sarah at one point and part of me thinks was they, were they really acting that? because that's proper raw emotion it's a really beautiful scene we hear the same theme from season 2 which is the uh, it, honestly, I love that episode so much. We've got the double whammy of the, the, the two Faith episodes, where Faith comes back, kidnaps and tortures Wesley, and this is coming off just after she um, the, the, the season four of Buffy episodes. This is just after she, uh, you know, Buffy beats her in that. And this, this is the main reason to watch it, specifically these episodes. Her, that is an amazing piece of TV and her arc, she's such a tragic character the, the final scene in the rain where she's just beating Angel and she goes, come on, kill me, I'm bad, I'm bad, I'm bad and then we've got a wonderful low angle shot where we see Wesley with the knife and he just drops it because Faith breaks down crying in the rain It, it is, it's, it's beautiful and then Buffy shows up in the next one acting pretty out of character I have to say um, and that's all good. The finale of season one of Angel is really, really, really fun. It sets the stage for season two with Darla. And yeah, I, I enjoyed it, Angel season one overall. I do prefer Buffy simply because I've spent longer with the characters. Um, and sometimes it, feel like, it feels like Angel isn't really its own shit. It feels like it is certainly how I'm watching it. Oh, okay, the main course is done. Oh, let's get a dessert and get a, some an extra 50 minutes in this universe now but it's still good and uh, it is definitely worth a watch so yeah that's Angel season 1 and Buffy season 4 done with next time we'll be looking at obviously season 5 and Angel season 2 so uh, yeah so yeah hope you enjoyed this one and uh, see you in my next one take care now